the king of the north! I am the dragon's daughter. Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with some juice to get you through the long night. Today is day three of Targaryen week, and if you are pumped for Targaryen week, then please slap a like on this video and drop some dragon emojis in the comment section. On the continent of Essos, the first empire that the Maesters can agree ever was, was the Giscari Empire of Old Geese. Old Geese was a city built on the back of slaves. The empire of Old Geese dominated Essos for centuries. But on a peninsula across from Slaver's Bay were the very people who would bring Old Geese to its knees. The Valerians. The Valerians had something no one else had. Dragons. Tamed dragons. No one knows where dragons came from or the Valyrians for that matter. The Valyrians themselves claim they are direct descendants of dragons and they share the same blood as dragons. Valyrians have purple eyes and hair, the palest silvers and golds. Their beauty is said to be unnatural, just as unnatural as their dragons. So maybe they are descendants of dragons. If the dragons were brought forth by the 14th flames, then maybe it was the same flames that brought forth the Valyrians. Or if the moon really was an egg and really did wander too close to the sun, then it's from that egg that maybe the Valyrians came from as well. Or is it a side they come from? Both dragon and Valyrians. It is also important to note that the rise of Valyria occurred directly after while Westeros recovered from the long night. Heat is nature's counterbalance to cold. The Valyrians may well have been the counterbalance to the White Walkers. They are very similar in their opposites. Wiser men and women say that the Valyrians were no more than sheep herders that found dragons stirring in the 14 flames and tamed them with magic. But from my experience, wise men have been wrong for years. We still don't know their origin, but Valyria was on the rise. There was no king in Valyria. Valyria got its name, the Freehold of Valyria, because all the citizens of Valyria that held land had a voice. The Valyrians went to war with the Giscari five times. Each time they went to war, the Giscari would fall in battle. During the fifth war is when the Valyrians decided there would not be a sixth. They pulled down the Giscari ancient brick walls, turned pyramids and streets to ash and fields to fire. Astapor, Yunkai, and Marine were all once a part of Old Geese, and they are the only part of Old Geese to survive. But even these cities were recently taken by conquest, and Daenerys has showed as a mirror to her ancestors before her that the harpy was never a match for the dragon. The Valerians, seeing slavery as a profitable source of income, they chose to be slavers themselves. Seeing Marine and Yunkai and Astapor get rich off the flesh of other human beings was too enticing for the Valerians, so they decided they would do the same. Those they conquered were the first they enslaved. The Valerian mines were rich with ore. From the ore, they extracted copper, tin, iron, gold, and silver. As Valyria grew, so did the conquests for more slaves. The Valerians expanded their conquests in all directions. They went east and west to the very western shores of Essos. On the shores of Essos is where Valyria founded the free cities of Kohar and Norvis. Old Volantis and Lys were trading colonies. Pentoth and Larath, almost all the cities of Essos, save for a few around the Ronar and Bravos. Bravos wasn't made by Valyria, it was made because of Valyria. It was founded by escaped slaves from Valyria. The secret city was hidden under fog so the dragons couldn't see it from above, but that's a tale for another day. If you want a video on Bravos, let me know. Valyria profited in every way imaginable. It was the richest freehold ever. It had dragon roads connecting city to city, paved highways to transport goods. The dragon roads are something way ahead of its time. Fused stone roads where three wagons can ride abreast. The stone is high from the ground, allowing rain to run off to the sides in a clean path 
free of mud and muck. Valyria was the ember in the sky. Cities upon cities have rose and fell, but none have ever been its like. Valyrians could shape stone into art and make Valyrian steel with fire and blood, but all of this was lost by the doom. Some say the Valyrians had their slaves dig too deep into the mines, too deep into the earth. Some say it was a natural disaster. Others point to vile sorcery. But whatever the cause, the capital was a ruin, and the cities that were held became free and independent. The dragons were gone, save for the dragons that the Targaryens escaped with. The Targaryens never looked east again, though. They journeyed west. The Valyrian Tide, or the Valyrian Conquest of Essos, is what sent the Andals running to Westeros, fleeing their lands rather than submitting to conquest. All that exists today of Valyria are ruins and the Smoking Sea. The strait that was carved right through the capital, the land sunken and consumed by water, forming a new body of water that still smokes a hundred years later. Valyria fell, but not all fell with it, because Daenerys is the blood of old Valyria, the blood of the dragon, and she will take what is hers with fire and blood. I am Daenerys Stormborn of the blood of old Valyria, and I will take what is mine. With fire and blood, I will take it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. You guys told me on Instagram that you really wanted to see this, so I made it happen for you. What are your thoughts on Valyria? It's always been a very intriguing for me personally and reminds me a lot of like Pompeii and Atlantis. I also did a video on the Doom a while back and I'll link that at the top because that goes into more detail about what I think caused the Doom. You can connect with me on these social medias. Please click that subscribe button and hit that notification Shame. bell and join the Sweet Shame. Summer family. Okay, Shame. my sweet summer children. Shame. Have a good day.